through here one day and there was just a whole bunch of garbage when it was just such a beautiful area to be walking in other than the garbage. And we just didn't think it was safe for our puppy dogs, not safe for families with kids with fences with nails sticking out and shingles and, and couches and everything. So we did some exploration and I found out from the city archives that it was an urban regional park called Richard St. Barr Baker Off Forest Station area, which meant it was an urban regional park that I could go to as a general public and I didn't have to worry about trespassing or that it was someone's property. And then I went, oh, it's an urban regional park. It has garbage in. Well, that's not right. So we organized some community cleanups. The first one was with Montgomery Place Community Association. And the next one was with a whole bunch of green groups and interested community associations and user groups. And then we went, we can't keep doing this year after year after year. So we had a community meeting with all sorts of different interested stewards and stakeholders and the MP and the city councillor for the area. And we came to the decision that, you know, we need barriers up, we need signs up, we need an education and awareness program. Part of the education and awareness process of this was that if we were going to ask the city to put interpretive signs up here, if we were going to do a GPS interpretive app, what do you put on them? Well, you put the history and the heritage of the area. And when we found out it was named Richard St. Bar Baker and the Richard St. Bar Baker fonts were located at the University of Saskatchewan, I went there. And it was around the same time that I met Robert White and Paul Hanley, who personally knew Richard St. Bar Baker, and I went to a few talks that they had. And I went, this is one amazing global conservationist. And uh, the more I learned about him from Paul Hanley and Robert White and the archives, the more I wanted to learn. Yeah, well, when I met St. Barb, he was 84, uh, turning 85 that summer, and he uh, had crossed the Sahara Desert and uh, had traveled around the world, been in 108 countries, had been, you know, in Australia, New Zealand, and married a sheep rancher in New Zealand, and he had plans to cross the Gobi Desert on horseback, and he was learning Chinese so he could make that easier. He, he was like a wizard. He was so enthusiastic about life, so, uh, so full of life and just so uh, vigorous and so uh, always on, you know, dreams of another lifetime in front of him at 85. And uh, he, just, he just sort of swallowed you up. He just, you know, like his passion just absorbed one. And he just had a bit ability to co connect with people at all levels of society from uh, First Nations people when he homesteaded near here to the Kikuyu tribesmen in Kenya to presidents and prime ministers. So, so uh, he just brought people together and brought, like the, 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 the motto of his organization was Tuamwe, pull together, and that's what he tried to do, pull people together for conservation of the earth. Uh, Richard St. Barr Baker had many amazing missions. One of his most important missions that he wanted to get out to people was to develop a tree sense. He had an epiphany experience when he was younger, an ecstatic experience in the forest where he became connected to the universe. It was amazing to read that passage in his book, Hivix is explaining it. Well, it seems his mission uh, began in Kenya when he was working with Kikuyu because, you know, working for the colonial service, which he was at that time, he realized that the forests would be exploited, but they weren't being replanted and the Kikuyu as well were slash and burn agriculture and he realized he had to inculcate a tree sense among people, the importance of trees. And so he worked with people at the tribal level, like he got to know the chiefs and he got to know their language and he just sort of uh, said, well, we'll work together and we'll create this little society and we'll call it the Men of the Trees. When he started the Men of the Trees Foundation with the Watu Wamiti in Kenya, Africa, he wanted them to take a pledge before Nairi, which was their name for their god, goddess, all that is. And they had to promise to plant 10 trees every year, protect trees everywhere, and do a good deed every day. Because Richard St. Barr Baker served in World War I beside Lord Baden Powell. So he borrowed the Boy Scouts motto. And then kind of made a little like a secret society, like, you know, we're going to be this club and we're going to plant trees and we're going to do good deeds and we're going to protect forests and uh, started nurseries and then he realized this is a working model and when he went to Nigeria he did the same thing and then he was called on then to go to Palestine and there he brought a bit different face to communities together who weren't speaking to each other to uh, start a Men of the Trees organization in Palestine 
And then after that, of course, there was a market crash in 1929. So he decided to go traveling around the world and he went to US and he fell in love with the Redwoods and got involved with saving the Redwoods. And for every year during the 1930s, and of course, he was crossing by boat, he came across and worked with uh, the campaign to save the Redwoods in California, even doing fundraising in England. And so uh, on his around the world tour, he went to Australia and New Zealand and gradually developed this organization in over 100 countries around the world. And it's still existing as the International Tree Foundation. The Men of the Trees Foundation that he founded, which is now called the International Tree Foundation, has a motto, Tuahamwe, working together, all as one, which is very similar to the Saskatchewan motto. And this also is something that has come true for the Richard St. Bar Baker Forestation area, because doing our cleanups, um, advocating for the park, cannot come through by just one person. It is many, many green groups, community associations, individuals, stewards and stakeholders that all come together to make this park what it is today. Well, the park is very unique. It was designed and uh, created sort of be a man-made forest on the prairies. Uh, normally, we don't have uh, conifers in this abundance here uh, because they grow a lot farther north. I have heard an ecologist call it a laboratory and ecological succession, which is true. Um, it went from being a farmer's field to being this amazing mixed woodland forest. And I would have to drive two hours in my car past the Saskatchewan tree line to get into a mixed woods forest because our elevation isn't the right height for a coniferous tree here in the prairies. We are a moist mixed grassland. So this is a treasure, it's a tree and it's flat. It's great for any age walking. And it's, it's also a combination of ecotones. We have the acidic soil from these spruce and scotch pines and we have the moist mixed grasslands of the prairie. So we have over 17 species at risk out here just because it is a unique environment. And that in itself is exciting. The best resource for learning about the afforestation area or helping us inventorying the resources here is using the iNaturalist app. You can take pictures of anything and, and uh, have it documented on that app. There's a cone on top there too. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get a picture of that pine spruce cone right there. That's awesome. And this will help us in terms of inventorying the species at this site. And we also do guided tours in the summer where a group does it as, a, as an activity on a weekend afternoon. The fact that we have this man-made forest, uh, 325 acres right on the outskirts of Saskatoon, and the fact that it's named after a global conservationist of renown that is an inspirational role model for people around the world. And the fact that his archives are here at the university, his last tree is planted here and he's buried here. I think in the future people will actually do pilgrimages here. I think it's really important historically to uh, document the fact that St. Barb Baker had sort of a sense of place here in Saskatoon from homesteading here, from going to university here, from initiating John Diefenbaker when John Diefenbaker was a student as well, uh, penning the University of Yale and then coming back over the years and then hitting an honorary doctorate here and then various uh, uh, times after that he came back to Saskatoon and then ended up planting his last tree here and dying here and because he was a Baha'i being buried here and, and then this city naming this area after him, he wasn't aware of the fact that this was named after him, in fact, when he was alive. And we only learn about this after. So it seemed that then his archives were also donated to the University of Saskatchewan and are the fourth most used archives at the university. So uh, because of the uh, importance of environmental issues in our day and age, his importance will grow more and more in the future as well because he is a, role model, uh, champion, that gives us an idea of how we need to be in terms of how we relate to the planet. I felt that cleaning up the park was a great honour to Richard St. Bar Baker. When you have trash in a park named after him, it's rather like um, despoiling maybe a cemetery site or something like that. And you kept thinking that maybe Richard St. Bar Baker, a great global conservationist who wanted to protect trees and plant trees worldwide. And then here we are with a magnificent afforestation area and no one knows it's named after Richard St. Bar Baker. And so you're thinking, he's just turning in his grave going, why doesn't someone know my story and why don't they celebrate that this amazing park is named after his achievements and his legacy? 
we decided to do a documentary about when Richard St. Barr Baker received his honorary doctorate of laws 50 years ago on November 6, 1971 for extraordinary uh, global humanitarian service. I wasn't so sure at first how it was going to work out to make just a very short film uh, about the afforestation area and St. Barb at the same time because uh, I mean a whole book is written about uh, St. Barb and recently published and uh, but you know I knew uh, he was important to me and to several friends that I know and I know that we could share a lot and of course there are other people around the world and Gradually, we started to realize, yeah, we should contact all of them and get different perspectives. You know, people from England and Scotland and Switzerland and Australia and so on that had been touched by him. So, uh, in the end, uh, it was Julia is the driving force of this organization, and she's kind of like that Saint Barb spirit. You just gotta get on the train, you know. <laughs> So we were celebrating the 50th anniversary from when Richard St. Barb Baker received his honorary doctorate of laws with an, with an amazing education and awareness film and an education curriculum package to go with it for youth groups and teachers. And you can find this um, film on SASTEL, on YouTube, on, and you will find our link on our website, which is stbarbaker.wordpress.com, and we'll be putting it on our Facebook site. So it is should be fairly easy for everybody to find. If you can't find it, just email us. It's friendsafforestation at gmail.com. We wanted people to not only know about the Richard St. Barb Baker afforestation area for health and wellness, and during COVID for an amazing place to socially isolate because it's 326 acres in size, but it's also the legacy of this amazing global conservationist that everybody should know about. And so that is what inspired us that we have to get the film out there to share this with the world. The Saskatoon has a landmark for the world. Richard St. Barb Baker is honoured internationally. New Zealand has plaques and science. England has plaques and science. We have a forest. We have to let the universe know about it. If you have program ideas that you'd like to see on Max TV Local, email us at max.local at sastel.com.